Today is day two of introduction for Jason, or Jason, is if Kyle says it. So if you know Jason, today is day two of Jason for beginners, okay? Are you there, Kyle Williams? Yep, I'm here. I'm ready. Today, today is day two of beginning. What are we doing today, Kyle? So today, today we're uh, continuing continuing our discussion on JSON. Uh, so it's about passing data from one application to another uh, so that we can work with external applications and we can download uh, records from their service to our FileMaker databases. Uh, so let's go ahead and go to our share screen. Here we go. Let's go ahead and uh, continue where we left off here. Uh, so yesterday we were talking, or I'm gonna just back up a couple for those that weren't here yesterday. Uh, so yesterday we started with the basic JSON introduction and here we have a very basic JSON set element. And right here we have uh, the source JSON that we, so if we had JSON already and we wanted to update it by adding new values to it, we would put that JSON value here. So I have right down here, this shows the syntax of it. So we have JSON set element, JSON, then we have our key or index or path, a value, and then our JSON type. Uh, so here we have our key or index path. So this would be our key, and this is our value. So JSON is all about key value pairs. So when we run this, we get uh, this very simple JSON object, and objects are defined by these little curly brackets on either side. And in the blue here, that's our key and then our value. Um, and then beyond that, we can go to JSON get element to look at that JSON. So we can see the field name up here, JSON, and the table is JSON, the field is JSON. So we have that right here, and now we're trying to get our full name out of that. Uh, so then we can see our result on the right. Continue on to number two here. Okay, so uh, on our second slide here, uh, we are introducing JSON format elements, and we're making this a little bit more complex. So instead of just that one JSON element, we now have four. Uh, so um, this is, again, one JSON object, which is defined by the curly brackets. So this would be essentially one record in a database uh, with four fields in it, and then data for each of those four fields. Um, so, and again, we can look at JSON get element. We can look at that JSON that we just created here, and we can get the email out and then we can see the result over here. Uh, so continuing on. Um, so here's where we were introducing empty values and all the different uh, JSON types. Uh, so here we have JSON string, JSON number, JSON Boolean, JSON null. And then I put this in here so we can see what happens if the JSON is left empty, if there's no JSON type specified. And what happens when you don't specify the JSON type is it defaults to JSON string. So we get the little double quotes on here. Um, so I put in here JSON string, JSON number, null, and Boolean so we know where the source is and what it's feeding us. So if we're using the JSON type JSON Boolean with an empty value, it's going to return false. If we have uh, JSON null as our JSON type, it's going to return null. And then if we're feeding JSON number an empty value, it's going to give us zero. So it's a little bit different on the, depending on what JSON type you're using. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, so need to be very specific about what JSON type you're using when you're setting up your JSON. So here uh, we're doing different JSON strings, different values feeding into that. And we can see how this is different on each of these. So here we have a JSON string, we're feeding it an empty value. So therefore it's giving us our double quotes. Uh, if we're feeding the JSON string, the value of false. So that's right here, false. Uh, there's no quotes around this. So it's not a text string. It's basically a Boolean value we're feeding it. And so when it evaluates that Boolean value of false, it gives us the number zero. Uh, and then uh, this is kind of interesting. When you have a, a string, you can put leading zeros in here. And that's going to get interesting in a minute when we go to JSON number. Uh, so let's go ahead and move to that. So with JSON number, you can see here we have our leading zeros again. And when you're using the, the JSON number, it needs to give you a response of an actual number, and an actual number isn't led by a bunch of zeros, so it just gives you that 12. Um, so it's a little bit different. 
Uh, another thing you're going to notice with JSON number, none of these values have quotes around them. Uh, so that way we we can see right here from the value that it's feeding us that that is an actual number. It's not a string of text. So any string would be surrounded by quotes. Um, so I'm really going through the basic stuff here. I want to make sure everybody understands the different JSON types and the different values it can return. Because, uh, you know, when you're feeding like JSON Boolean, if you feed JSON Boolean an empty value, what does that equal? So you can see over here, JSON Boolean empty equals false. Okay, Stu, uh, Stu has a question. So both true and false are zero as a number, question mark? Correct. Well, actually, no. True is a one and false is zero. So, uh, well, true is when, when you're using JSON Boolean, uh, here we're feeding it true and it comes out true. Uh, if we're feeding it to number one, number one also comes out true. So even in FileMaker, when you have an empty value or a zero value, it's going to be false. So that's consistent with FileMaker. Uh, so here we have a value of one is going to be true. A value of true is going to be true. Uh, so you can also change this to any number you want, and it's going to equal true. So if it's not zero, it's true. So that, that's consistent with the FileMaker. Uh, Alan wants to know if you can uh, JSON clog, or someone asked that. Ken asked, can JSON's clog, and Alan says not on the first date. So uh, shit's getting going sideways real fast here. So, yes, welcome everyone to Friday. I want to say congrats. So you're doing great, Kyle. This is really good. This is good. Well, um, during, yeah. the during the cleanup of the recording, this is all recorded, all the clogging mayhem will be removed, and it will be very sanitary. This will be a sanitary jason conversation so so this is awesome. this is jason and jason so what else what other jason stuff do we have uh so we're still kind of going through this is the last jason type so we're going to be moving on a little uh to some more interesting stuff after this so this is just comparing jason null feeding it a bunch of different values and what is it going to return um so as you've seen with string it returns different values they're all in quotes with numbers it gives us different values and they're there are no quotes around them, but it gives us the numbers. Uh, in Boolean, it either gives us true or false without any quotes. It's just Boolean values. And then JSON null here, it doesn't matter what value you feed it, whether it's uh, right here, it's a, a string of text, uh, or if we just want to give it a Boolean value of true or false or give it a number, it doesn't matter what we feed it. It's always going to return null. And then when we use JSON get element to get that value, it gives us just nothing. It's an empty value. So basically the same thing as an empty string. Uh, so it just gives, populates an empty field there. Uh, so let's go on to the next one. So here uh, we're introducing a JSON object within the JSON object. So this is kind of interesting because we have right here, you can see the curly brackets. So that means that everything between those is a JSON object. So here what we're doing is we're actually using uh, we're putting a little period in here on each of these elements down here. And that period is giving us an, a new section. So this is a, a JSON object within our parent JSON object. So it's basically a child object within it. Um, so we can pass multiple information. And then if I want to get that object out, I can use JSON get elements and then I can just ask for the address. And what that gives me is some JSON. So I'm using JSON format elements here so that way we can make this readable. So Okay. I can I ask a question you just for terminology real quick? Sure. So so this let's just talk about so this right here and then these items right here, those are off, obviously a value name pair, right? These are all value name pairs. Yeah. Now, are these is this whole thing in the object, or is each one of those a separate object? What did you, what did you call those? What terminology? What do we? Uh, call those them? are all keys. So these are all key values. Then, then so, what is then what is this right here? Because that's a subset of that key, right? Yes, correct. The, this this is the value of this key right here. So yeah. it's all key value pairs. So we have a key, we have a value, key, value. Up here, we have a key also but you'll notice it's empty right here. And that's because its value is this entire JSON object. So when we're trying to look up that object, we get 
all of this data. So, mm. so that so a JSON object is something between two brackets. So a JSON object could be everything between these two brackets or everything between those two brackets. Those are Correct. both considered JSON objects between brackets. Correct. Okay, got it. Yeah, w when you have curly brackets, uh, we're going to get into arrays here in a minute uh, as we progress. So there we go. So here we have our introduction to JSON arrays. And you'll notice at the very top, it has a little square bracket. And the very bottom, it has a square bracket. And then it has this JSON object here, JSON object here. And these are all separated by these little commas. And then we have an empty value here. So that's also a JSON object, but it's just empty. And then we have our fourth JSON object here. Wait, back up. So the, the null one there, it doesn't have to have a bracket before and after it? Uh, it does have a comma, but no, it doesn't need to have a bracket around it. Um, so it's so the point of this is uh, when you're working with arrays, the mm -hmm. very first value here, this is our zero value. Yes. This is our one value. Mm -hmm. This would be two, and this would be three. So if you notice right here when we're building this array, I have a zero for this first section, one for the second section, and right here there is no two. The two is missing. And then we have the third right here. So that's where we're getting our null value from is there is no two. Wow. Okay. Cool. So, yeah. Uh, and to get our one of these objects out of our array, all we need to reference is that number. So, we, again, uh, arrays are defined by the square bracket on either side of it. So this to here, this is all one array. Uh, you can have multiple arrays. This is just one of them. So here we're wanting the first value from our array. Or, well, the second value because it's zero based. So we're looking over here. This is zero here oh, at the top there. And here's our one value. So when we're looking at the one, we're re asking for this data right here. And so that's what we're getting over here. So this is our result. So if I change this to zero... I can get this very first one. If I change it to uh, three, we're going to get that last one. Uh, so again, when you're requesting like the, our second one here, our, our number two, I mean, this is going to give us our null value. And we can't get any JSON value out of that because that's not valid JSON because it doesn't have the curly brackets around it. It gives us this weird error. So... Uh... <laughs> Because this format elements exist, that's what's going on. So oh. you notice the other ones. Yeah, if if I come down here, comment those out, then I get my null value. Yeah, so that's a okay. Got it. Got it. So the so format elements. Format, nothing. The format elements is what's <laughs> screwing us up. Okay, so format yep. element should say JSON or JSON uh, human readable is what we. That's what we mean. Exactly. That. Yeah, human readable. So if I go back to the first array, this is unformatted. So it just gives us a string of text right here. Uh, it's not very easy to look at. Luckily, it is color formatted, so we can kind of see it. Uh, if it was but all it, black, it's it would only be really hard to tell. It's only color formatted because of your custom function, though, right? Uh, actually, that's a monkey bread solution uh, function. Mm. So he has a, a function called JSON Colorize. So if I go into here and I, I look point. at yeah. uh, so the JSON. So I'm using an auto-enter calculation. And it's MBS, JSON Colorize, and then I'm evaluating the formula in this field over here. Oh, okay. So there's my JSON. It has to evaluate that field so it knows what's there. Wait, wait, wait. And is is the Colorize a free one? Is that one of his free functions? Uh, it's not exactly free. It does work on the free one, but it'll pop up a message. Um so oh, okay, yeah. So I I activated a trial, a trial license here. So oh, right here I have a trial license. Oh, okay. Expires because yesterday you didn't have a yeah. trial. I don't think. Or did you have the trial yesterday? I, I had the trial license. Uh, okay. This expires in a couple of weeks, so it's not going to be good for anyone. But it, it's a good demonstration of how to activate your uh, Monkey Bread Solution license uh, when you purchase it. So that activates it in the file. That might be my oh, phone number. Oh, this this phone number right yeah. here? Uh -huh. 
Yeah, that's that's your number. Oh, that's our that's our <laughs> so Richard one of our, Carlton. Oh, uh, yeah, that's our. So yeah, uh, here Santa I'm getting Clara a little number. bit more complicated. Yeah. So this is an array with your information in here. So the array includes your email. It includes your phone number. Uh, so this is your office phone number. <laughs> Check out from your website. So hopefully that's okay. Uh, so what this is is uh, I'm introducing a single JSON object here. And then we have an array starting. This array only has one value, so we have zero, 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 zero. So there's only one array here. Uh, we can add another array here. If I just go copy and then paste and uh, email address. Okay, so one. One, one. Doesn't want to just go right to the same spot here for force. Okay. So there we can add a second uh, object to this array. So that's what it looks like when you have multiple objects within one array. Uh, so right here, we're looking at the first array. So that we have a zero, and then we're asking for the phone number from that first array. And then it gives us that nice formatted here. Uh, so a little bonus uh, tip here. If I use uh, ABS here, uh, so a lot of people use uh, filter values, but this also works to get rid of all the formatting and just extract the numbers. So kind of a neat little tip there. Absolute. Uh, that's interesting. Absolute does yeah. that, eh? Huh. Yep. So that's a hack. I'm, is I, that, I don't, <laughs> that's a hack because absolute means that if you have a negative number, it turns into a positive number. So Yeah. So uh, let's do a, a zero plus there we have a negative number and it's negative because it has the little brackets around that first number mm. it anytime you have brackets around a number that's a negative value ah, so that's why count. it's giving us a negative value here mm. so it just it pulls out the number when you uh, evaluate it as a numerical formula so it's giving us uh, the phone number without any of the characters, but it's putting this little negative in front of it. So neat little trick. You can use ABS to get rid of that negative, and then you just get the numbers out of it. Um, <laughs> so that's that's an alternative to using the uh, uh, filter. filter. Well, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, you could filter, then you have to put in the... Uh, yeah, and then you got to do all of these numbers, yep. and then do that, and add that at the end. And, then that, uh, and uh, I messed uh, up somewhere in there. <laughs> What'd you do? But I don't know that filter values filter. No, it's just filter. Did I spell that wrong? Or do you put? Or do you put this part at the front? Uh, which the filter? Yeah, I don't know. All right. Well, now we have to know. Now we have to know. <laughs> now we have to know. Okay. If this gives us what we're missing here. So text the ah, filter. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. So. Oh, you don't put it in. T you put it in quotes, or you don't put it in quotes. Is that what you did? Didn't do. Uh, I put it in quotes. No, I know, but so, maybe it's not supposed to be in quotes. The uh, the filter text. And then. Uh, Zero. And uh, just make sure I got this part right. I'm just going to copy and dump that out for a moment. All right. Uh, what am I doing wrong? Okay. Jason, get element. Got it. Get you have a period in front of Jason. the quote. Oh, there you go. You got rid of that. Okay. That looks good. Uh, what, what, what are we getting wrong, folks? Help us out. Phone number. That's what it is. There's the number. Okay. All right, so before that. we try to filter it, I want to make sure I got that part right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. good developer always double checks out his work as he goes along. So I, I don't know what I was doing wrong there. This looks the same, but there it is. Okay. So, yeah, you can use the ABS or you can do it the long method here with filtering just numbers out. Okay. All right, so next. Uh, so, yeah, let's go on to the next one. Uh, so here, adding multiple JSON objects. I kind of just showed that in the last one. but Oh, so here I have uh, both of us in here. So I have 
one array that's me and one that's you. So Kyle Williams, and then has my information here. Uh, Richard Carlton has your information there. And then uh, I'm just extracting out my email from my first array to get, oh, so this is getting the email address and the type. So there's two values here in the email. Uh, so I, here I have the email and then I have two values within my email object. So I have address or type, I can look for either one of them. So if I go over here, I can do email, maybe I just want uh, the ad address. And then it gives me the email address. So that's how you can look through here. Uh, so to start from the beginning here, uh, if I just, let me get rid of that part. Uh, so if I, if I start at the top here and I look at my name, what is it gonna give me if I just ask for my name? It's gonna give me this whole array right here. And that's what we're getting here. So then when we're building this formula out, we wanna look at uh, right here, we have the square bracket. That means our next value needs to be part of an array. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our square bracket here. And since we want the very first one and the first one's always zero and Jason, uh, so there I'm looking at the first array. And then here it gives me uh, all the contents of that first array. It's really hard to see without being formatted. Okay. So there, there's our formatted. So now we can see exactly what it's giving us. It's giving us this value right here, which is the very first object within our array, array of being defined by the square brackets. So uh, if I wanted to get either email or phone, now we go to our next step of trying to get that. Uh, so I'm just gonna get rid of the formats to try to make this clean and easy. Okay, so here, if I want the, the phone number, I can type phone. But it has to be dot phone, nope. Uh... It does not have to be dot. It, it can be with or without dot. If you're uh, coding in JavaScript, JavaScript does require the dot. Uh, okay. FileMaker does not. Okay, so, so everyone, of, everyone, just what you hear, you hear what Jay's, Kyle just said, use the damn dot or you will screw yourself. <laughs> now, let yeah, me, if you're coding in multiple languages, if you do JavaScripting, you're probably going to want to get used to using the dot. Okay. And FileMaker is not required, but. All right, so let's. let's other language that is. So here's what I want to do I want to get uh, the first array, right? So we don't know it's Kyle Williams, we just know it's the first array. So. Uh, how do we get the first array? If we want to say, just give me the first array. Because okay. you, you said Kyle Williams right there, right? So, yeah. So we want to use the J JSON list keys function here. Uh huh. And uh, so then we're going to want to put in JSON. Uh, JSON, and then we're going to want the empty. Uh, so this is our path. So we're looking at our JSON, which is right here, and we want the path empty. So there is no path to define. And that gives us our two key values that we can look at. So now we know that we have either Kyle Williams we can use or Richard Carlton. So I can do copy, I can paste this over here and then I can go like no, this. No, 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 back up, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Because right. you're not, you wouldn't know this. We're trying to do this programmatically. You're not gonna be in the middle of the code in the middle of the night, like copying and pasting my name in there. I need it to like say, always get the number two one or the number one one or the position one, right? You see what I'm saying? You copied and pasted Richard Carlton in there, right? Right. So I guess, you see what, okay, I'm, you so see what I'm saying? I'm, I'm trying to get you to do it without tweaking it in flight, right? Okay, so Jason list keys, empty. Uh, so remember this gives us a list. Okay. So I, I just thought of this. So what I could do here is maybe I want that second value. Yep. So I can use get value Okay, and then I can go over here to the end and say I want the second value this time because I'm looping through these values. I, you know, I use one, uh, I use the JSON list keys to get a list and a variable. So now but, I have a variable populated. But, but in this case, get value, the get value function starts at one, not at zero. So that is a, Correct. will screw people's yeah. brains up, right? Thing. All right, so there is a question here. Several people are buzzing. 
So we need to go back. Ken asked a question, and Ellen did a double buzz. Question, why does it pull? It pull the values in reverse order of how they are entered. When you had two items in the array before, they were numbered. In this example, they are all zero. Uh, okay, so this array here, there's only one value of the array. And this value, the JSON object here, is the zero numbered object. Uh, the, you can see here, they're all zeros. So there is no one to pull from. Um, is that an order or something else? So it's a number of the array, the number of the JSON object within our array. So this is number zero within our array. So the array starts at this square bracket. With, within the Kyle array. I guess like I call it the, could call it the Kyle array. So that's level zero within the Kyle array. Okay. Right. You could, why don't you put a value uh, two within the Kyle array just to help everyone out a little bit. Um, so to do it. Oh, okay. Uh, so going down here, uh, if I do two, it's going to give us a, well, it's going to give us a couple null values. Well, it doesn't have to be number two. It, it, uh, back, it doesn't have to be number two. It just has to be the next one after that. So that could be number one then, right? Yes. Right. Yeah. Uh, so actually here we have a couple. I, I just split it up because okay. I gave us a couple ones and a couple zeros. So now we have this JSON object, which is number one or zero, I mean. Yep. Because the first one is zero. So we have here zero phone number, zero phone type. And that's what it's giving us. So here's zero. And here's our one right there. Uh, so I don't know if that should answer his question. Kind of. I think it's getting there. Stu asked the question, is the JSON set element or the JSON format element that does it? Well, JSON format element is the – okay, we're, I think they're talking about sorting. We talked about sorting yesterday. You want to cover, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, cover the sorting stuff? Right. So uh, what's putting the email on top of the phone is it's sorting it as it's building this uh, array. So it's both of these functions will sort it. Uh, so if I got rid of the JSON format elements. Which is uh, the human readable one, everyone. That's yeah, human that's, readable. that's what makes it human readable. Uh, so uh, down here we have email still on top of phone. So it's still sorted in the same order. Uh, so even if I have this in a completely different order. So if I take this and I paste it up here, so now we have our phone on top of our email. This does not change at all. It's still the exact same order. Uh, yeah, so Kai, I think, I think so Ken had this question of why does it pull the values in reverse order? It's not like reverse order is how they're entered. It's sorting them, right? It's doing Yeah, sort. it's sorting them. So it's alphabetical. Uh, so that's why email's on top of phone because he comes before P. Uh, it's sorting them. So again, even the address is above type. Uh, numbers above type. So it's sorting it in alphabetical order with the keys. There. Okay. So the an so the answer is alphabetical. Yes. Correct. Yes. Let's see. David Angel says if you have FM two types of JSON functions, one to get information and one to create a JSON. So I, so I guess this is like the 20,000 foot view, right? right. David Angel's asking like, what, if you could classify, like, let's look at, can you bring up the help for FileMaker and just type JSON in there and see what the hell functions we have overall? There it shows the JSON.org link. Um, example, JSON data. So parsing JSON, JSON get element, list keys, list values. And then you have the format, the human readable, which isn't called human readable, right? It's called yeah, yeah. So it's kind of just showing some different examples. Uh, so there's like six the of these, element. right? How many functions are there with JSON in them? I guess you could just go to the calculation. Go to a, a calculation engine screen on FileMaker, right? Just bring up a calculation engine. I right. guess we can do it there. That's the easiest way, way, right? Or script data viewer, right? Yeah. So this is because what I want to see is if I type, uh, yeah, and then type JSON over there, and then let's take a look at everything. Okay, here we go. I don't know. There we go, folks. So that is your complete. Right. Uh, that's like your like like I need was that that first Matrix movie? We need guns, lots of guns. Suddenly all the guns <laughs> show up, right? So this is like all the all the all the guns we have that for JSON and FileMaker, right? So. Uh, you want to run through these one more time. So set element allows us to build the JSON. That's a builder, right? Correct. Yes. Uh, th this is what allows us to build the JSON. So you can see here I'm using JSON set elements. Right. And uh, 
format it makes it human readable, human uh, readable. and then uh, list keys and list values uh, we're just getting into those uh, and then uh, JSON delete element we're also going to about to get into yeah and then uh, format elements uh, we already explained yep yep um, that's pretty good that's good so All yeah right. th those are the built-in functions uh, I, I have a ton of them I'm going to show next week of custom functions uh, but let's uh, continue through this uh, let's see what we got next. Okay, so this is adding multiple JSON array elements to multiple JSON objects. So we're just getting it a little bit more complicated, a little more. Uh, so here we have multiple JSON objects in here uh, inside of a single array. And then we have another JSON object here. Uh, and this one has multiple JSON objects with multiple JSON objects. So this is getting really a little more complicated. So right here I have a, a JSON object from that curly bracket down to this one. So that's one JSON object. Uh, and right here's one. So yeah, this is a record, that's a record. And the, these are objects within that. So it's kind of kind of complicated at first glance. Um, so here uh, I'm using JSON get element to get the element that I want out of this. And then looking at the JSON and then I'm looking for Richard Carlton's information uh, and then I want the first array because there's uh, multiple uh, objects here. So this is looking at right here. So it's yeah. ignoring everything down below it. So because I have two, I have two in there, right? So yeah, yeah. So you have two JSON objects in there. Uh, so this one shows your email and phone at this section, and then email and phone down below. Uh, so we just want the, the phone number from the first array. And then it gives us the phone number and the type from that array. Mm -hmm. So it's retrieving this data right here. So it's looking at Richard Carlton, looking at the first array. Richard Carlton, first array. Good stuff. Good so, stuff. All right. What's next? Yeah, let's uh, continue on here. Here's where we're actually, we're starting simple. So we have one JSON object here uh, with one key value pair. And so the question here is, uh, when you start working with JSON, sometimes you have a simple JSON here, but you want to add to it. So remember down here where you have JSON set element and the first variable in your first parameter is JSON. So right here, I'm starting with an empty JSON. There's nothing there. And over here, I'm actually starting with the JSON from this field and I'm adding to it. So I'm starting with that JSON. You can see name full Kyle Williams. So right here, name full Kyle Williams. That's from the first JSON. And then here, we're adding the first name and the last name Ken, to this. Ken, you see in this resort right here, it did an in-flight resort, right? So Ken yes. sees that. Yep. So, that's so yeah, we have name full. And over here, all of a sudden, you know, even though we started with just this, it's sorting and giving us our first name first, then full, then last. So it's all alphabetized by the keys. <laughs> uh, if folks have questions, please ask questions. David Angel says, what's the difference between square brackets and kind of curly brackets? Okay, so uh, again, this is a, this starts and ends with a curly bracket, and that defines our JSON object. So there's no array here. This is just a JSON object. And so that's where we're getting into arrays here. Let me go down to Richard Carlton. An array is more, is more than one object, right? Correct? Correct. So, an, yeah, so, so, so array is a bracket. It's more than one object. An object is just a single beginning and matching ending bracket, right? So there are, there right. are objects all over the place. There are objects all over in here, right? Um, right. But we're bracketing right. them in arrays, which kind of – see, here's the thing. Back up. Can you scroll the top here real quick for those of you? I mean, so if you've been doing FileMaker for a while – Fundamentally, if you understand kind of entities and relationships, this shit is all very self-evident. Because here you've got people, then you have the related elements for the people, right? And then you have another thing right here, another record. This becomes a record in a, in a database. So instantly you see that this is record, this is a record, and then and then this one down here has more than one entry for this. So you'd have to have a way of a, a related item. So you got the parent, the child, mm -hmm. and multiple child. So this all frankly 
if you if you're brand new to relational databases, this is just another pile of steaming shit. But if you've been playing with a relational database, you're kind of starting to understand it, even though you're maybe a beginner, you're starting to understand it. I wish Megan was here. What point would she learn it? I would think as you start to become kind of a FileMaker power user, kind of what we call an intermediate user, right? You're still doing low code, right? Not pro code, not really doing JavaScript stuff, but understanding JSON and being able to like look at it and craft it a little bit. It's kind of an intermediate, I mean, but where would, where would people learn this, you think? Yeah, that would be intermediate to advanced. Probably, probably intermediate when the, you should be learning this. Start, start to play with it and then become like yeah. a ninja at advanced, right? Yeah, okay. The, the, okay. the moment you start playing around with APIs, that's when you really need to dig into this. So go ahead and uh, let's keep popping along. We can go a little bit long if we need to, but okay. we want to make sure that we hit all the basics here. So you can see here, this is actually replacing all of these values. So here, you see here that uh, I'm starting with an empty. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there's no JSON that I'm starting with. I'm building it right here. So I'm creating the name first, name last, name full, which gives us this JSON object here. You'll notice over here, so you see here I'm pulling from this right here. Uh -huh. And then you're swapping so I have out. that JSON here, and I'm swapping those out. The reason why all this information is disappearing over here is because these are the exact same keys. So it's not going to just create more additional duplicate keys within the same object. Instead, it's going to update. So, so this is introducing how to update your, your JSON. This is updating. Okay, great. Updating your values, yes. Uh, so here we're going to introduce the delete element. So we're building some JSON here. We have our JSON object, and we want to get rid of this name full because maybe we don't need it. We already have our first and our last name. Maybe that's duplicate of data. We want to simplify our database. And so we just want the first name and last name. And we can parse it. We can put it together later in an auto enter calculation. So all we need is the first name and the last name. Uh, so this way we can get rid of an element from our object. Uh, so deleting an array from an element. Uh, so this is kind of cool. Um, so we're starting with all of this. This is a, an array. So it's a JSON array with one, two, three, four objects. So we have our zero object, one object, two object, and three object. Uh, and so what we want to do here is we want to delete this whole first section. We just want to delete me out of the out of this JSON, uh, and we just want Nick, Calvin, and Richard right there. Uh, so how do we do that? We use a JSON delete element, and then we look at our JSON. And then we want to delete the first, our, our first JSON object from the array. It's a little tricky because it's not one base, it's zero based. So we're wanting to get rid of this, which is zero. David Angel just had a major learning moment. I had this a little bit earlier. So when I see brackets, that means that there's going to be more than one uh, curly bracket element or object, not element. Well, I'm not sure where element fits in here, but... There, a bracket is an array, and the curly brackets are an object. You'll have more than one. You'll have more than one object within the array. What if you only have one uh, object? Yeah, in an array? so that's what I was going to show you. This is an do? array uh -huh. because it has the square brackets on both sides. But there's only one so you object. Know this is an array, but there's only one object. And when we delete that one object, we get just the square brackets on either side. Okay. So that's an empty array. So an array. Okay, so let me. So the, the the dictionary definition of an array is a, a, a an array is a block of JSON with one or more objects. Got Correct. It. So 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 you can have a single object without an array, but you can't have. Well, it's it's the hierarchical, right? Because it shows that these items here would be belong to whatever was parked in between here. You couldn't you park something right in there in between, right below the array and above that element right then it shows ownership like like say we are going to say these people all work for rcc or they work for apple or something right yeah so that's where we would add rc right rcc right here uh-huh uh, and you'd have to go all we just the go way down the down. line here we add it yeah all of these so they're all in the same object so uh -huh. this is creating an object with an array within the object so now we have an object because the curly brackets on uh -huh. either side yep gives us the object. Yep. Within that object, we now have RCC, 
and we have an array within RCC, and here's all the staff within RCC. Which are four objects within that RCC array. Correct. correct? Yeah, this is very therapeutic and good. I mean, this is even useful for me. And this stuff, basically, you kind of need to know this because this is on on the certification test. Like I said, you're going to have some questions that will come in there. I know. So the, the next step here, I have a, a demonstration deleting multiple arrays or multiple objects from this array. Mm. So we have our same array that we were working with before, but we're trying to get rid of a few of them. Uh, so I'm just going to take this out so it's not confusing everyone. Uh, so what's going on here is we're using multiple delete elements, and they're all kind of sandwiched together. Mm. Uh, so here we're taking our JSON, we're deleting this very first one, and then we're deleting the third object and then the fourth object within that array. Mm. Uh, so the problem with doing this method, this is actually incorrect because it's going to get really messy because you're starting from the top and it deletes this first value uh -huh. and suddenly this first value is gone. So by oh, deleting that no. first value, oh, it offsets no. everything oh, no. and suddenly this two oh, is actually no. down here. So oh, then we're no. getting rid of Nick. Oh, no. So now we're stuck it's, with it's Richard and Calvin in the middle. It's committing the change <laughs> in flight. It's committing the change in flight. Right? Yes. So this is something I wanted to demonstrate mm. because this is a common bug within software. When you're trying to work with your JSON, you're deleting things in this order. You're getting rid of the top object, which suddenly shifts everything out of order. And suddenly you don't know what objects you're deleting after that. <laughs> so... I'm just going to paste this back in here and we'll get rid of that to avoid that confusion. Uh, so now I just put this little line in here for a separator so we can compare what's going on. Okay, so here uh, we have our same JSON that we're pulling over here, but we started the, the last object and work our way back to the top. So now here we're getting rid of the th number three here. So this is number three. We're deleting that everything else stays in the correct order. So now we're gonna get rid of number two, which is this one. Mm. So here at this point, we've gotten rid of these top, the last two, mm. which leaves us just these. And now we're getting rid of the first one, which is up here. And the only thing that's left after we've deleted those three is Richard Carlton. So last Yeah, minute, so I think that the, the critical <laughs> item to understand here, how you solve it is up to you. This is kind of a hack. Uh, but what you have to understand is as it's removing items, it's not evaluating the whole thing on whole. Like like FileMaker allows us, to, the platform allows us to identify specific items or specific fields or whatever we're going to do. And we're going to change that data. And then we're going to do one single commit at the bottom. This thing is doing what I would call in-flight commit. So it's doing one little thing. Then it commits it, and then everything shuffles up. Then it reloads the data over here, and then it runs the second one. That is uh, screwed up. Would be, I'm being charitable <laughs> when I say the word screwed up. Yeah, very charitable. Yeah, I, I've tried a number of different other methods to, to do this, but uh, unfortunately they don't give us any real other way to do it. So here I was trying this out. Mm -hmm. You know, when you use, uh, like, substitute, mm -hmm. you can put everything in an array like this, and it'll go down the line and perform all the actions in order. Uh -huh. uh, so, but unfortunately this didn't work. And then I also tried doing it this way, trying to find some simpler way to do it. Unfortunately, we have to use multiple JSON deletes for it to work. So kind of unfortunate, but that's, it is what it is. <laughs> all right, well, uh, cool. So Kyle, anything else you have for the folks? Uh, I think we covered everything for today. Have a good weekend.
the whole way. Calm, cool, collected the quarterback. Great read, good patience. More importantly, great job up front protecting this quarterback to give you a chance. And that's all you can ask for. Oh. Trying to rally down 10. 9.25 to go here in the fourth. Short motion by Amendola from the left. Brady takes the shot, goes snap. Stands in, throws it left for Amendola. Reaches up and snaps a high throw and lands inside the 10. Rolling to the 9. Ball slightly behind him, but Danny makes the grab.